This might be the single most interesting prop that I've taken a look at to date, and that's because it's a folding prop on an FPV quad. Now, folding props are nothing new. They've been around for a long, long time, for as long as I've seen on any old pictures and old engine planes, but they're not typically used for FPV or performance-oriented quads for a multitude of reasons. Number one probably being because the central hub introduces a whole level of complexity which may result in further complications in flight, transporting, whatever. It's another point of failure that people don't want to deal with. Also, you have all this extra plastic in the middle and the mechanism could potentially add more weight to the prop, which is also a downside. And generally, they just haven't been looked at. However, this prop is also not designed specifically for FPV. This is actually a repurposing of a prop that was in existence. It was the Teal One drone. So there's a company named Teal Drone and they made the Teal One and this is the prop that they use on the Teal One. That's why it's a weird 6.7 inch size and not a six inch or a seven inch size. I don't know if Teal One actually designed and manufactured the prop themselves. If I were them, I would probably just find a prop that fits my application too. I wouldn't bother re-engineering a prop altogether. But this prop, I'll get to the performance in a second. Let's take a look at the actual prop itself. So it's got these three folding blades. They fold out really nicely. The mechanism has absolutely no impact on flight performance at all, as far as I can tell. Maybe it does, but I, I really can't tell anything in flight. The material is a glass nylon material. It is not like a polycarbonate material. It is rather flexible. It's, it's, it's very flexible. If you felt like DJI props, it's even more flexible than DJI props. I'm assuming this, the, first of all, the glass nylon material is a very lightweight material. It has really, really I'll talk about that in a second. It's a light, it's a much lower density material. So you can use more material in your prop and still keep your weight down. However, the specific mix of nylon in this prop and many of the DJI props, I personally believe it's to improve its durability for shipping. You know, if you just throw this in a bag or somewhere or in the back of a car or something, the, the prop can bend and flex. So you don't want the, the prop to like break and you don't want it to stay flexed. You want it to be resilient and spring back. The hub mechanism, it has three pins through it. So the mechanism physically has three pins through it holding each blade in. However, you cannot get those pins out to replace the blades independently, which is probably the single most annoying thing about the prop. It would be really nice to be able to replace the blades if they do break. Also, this prop, while it has been repurposed, it has also been made Popo compliant, and they have a new kind of spring mechanism for the Popo thing too. Anybody that's used Popo knows that there's a little silicone washer underneath the uh, prop, the hub, over the hub, so that it puts pressure on the Popo mechanism. However, in my testing, I actually lost all my silicone washers and it still worked totally fine. But they're still trying to improve that thing, and this is what they're going to improve it with. So this prop comes with only four of these little springs and these are little circular wave springs and they take the place of the silicone washer underneath the prop hub i think it's a it's a much better solution and real big kudos to them to for continuing to work on the popo mechanism because i do think it's a good mechanism it's just not widespread enough i hope to see it much much more going forward the prop does have the little divots on the inside so that it does fit into popo um, shafts nicely okay now let's get to the flight footage and talk about the performance in, in general use cases of this prop. So what you're seeing here is the very first FPV footage that I've flown with this prop. The day before it was too dark, I just flew it a little bit of line of sight and I noticed something immediately as soon as I took off with this prop, which I'll tell you about in a second. But let's talk about the weight first. So this prop is a glass nylon material. Like I said, glass nylon is a lower density material than polycarbonate than other materials. And you can use more of the material in the prop and still keep your weight down. This is a 6.7 inch prop. However, it weighs less than many six inch props. It doesn't matter if it's polycarbonate or the carbon material or some other stuff. It's only seven grams. This prop with the whole mechanism and the blades and everything and its size and its entirety is only seven grams. That's extremely impressive for such a blade. In addition, it's only a three pitch. So it's a very shallow blade. And that results in a prop that is very, very responsive. I honestly was not expecting much from this prop. I was expecting it to be pretty bad because it's like a weird repurposed folding prop that doesn't have any kind of eh, arguably engineering for FPV or performance use to it. However, this prop is more responsive than pretty much any prop I've flown that's larger than 5.1 inches except for the one Racecraft 6032 prop, I believe, which is like a five gram six inch prop. 
This has the same response as that prop, which is very, very similar to a five inch prop. I'm really, really astonished by the response of this prop. What that means for the FPV pilot is that you're gonna be able to fly lower, more accurately, your throttle is going to feel much more accurate. You're not going to have a lot of guesswork to do in the throttle because the prop responds. It just feels like the whole loop time, the latency of your control loop is much quicker when you have a really, really good response prop. However, the flexible blade, the flexible blade is very flexible. And this prop was originally designed for a 2000 kV motor running on 4S. So it was designed for efficiency. It was not designed for performance. And we're trying to push its performance. And what I'm flying it here on is a 742 gram 7 inch frame, but they're 2208 motors, they're 1800 kV, and I'm running it on 5S, on a 5S 1500 milliamp. So you can see the flight time. The flight time is going to be about four and a half minutes flying the way I have here, which is on par for typically a five inch, uh, sorry, a six inch or a seven inch blade. It's not particularly efficient, it's not particularly inefficient. It is definitely more efficient than a five inch, but not particularly more efficient than a typical six inch. So the grip is good, it's a large prop, it's, it's a 740 gram all up weight quad, so it's got really good disc loading properties, so the grip is, is going to be good naturally. It's got really, really good response, like I've said already. It has adequate efficiency, not the best efficiency, but also not the worst efficiency. However, due to the flexible nature of the blade, the speed is lacking. Flexible nature as well as the shallow pitch, very shallow pitch, the speed is lacking. And it's the flexibility of the blade that's more of an issue than the shallow pitch, I feel, because once you get to the higher RPMs, it does deflect quite a bit and you just don't get any more speed out of it. You just get this kind of like wobbling of the blade tip. But what is this prop good for since I typically don't talk about props of this size. This is really a unique kind of thought. So it's designed to be an efficient long range cruising prop and I'd say it's really just that. It's exactly that. However, if you're doing long range flying, you're probably going up to like a mountain top or something to dive down the mountain and a lot of the times you'll be I haven't done it personally, I wish I have, but I've watched a lot of videos of other people doing it and a lot of the time they're coming down the side of that mountain and they're almost full throttle down the side of that mountain because they're trying to keep the quad up over the mountainside as they're diving down at ridiculous speeds. So the speed or the lack of speed in this prop may be an issue for big mountain dives. However, it is a really smooth prop, so it's, it's really nice to fly, and the response is, is really appreciated, so it might help with if everything else in the, in the diving process or the long-range process. I would also say this, that this prop is probably a pretty good uh, chase footage specialist. Usually when you're chasing cars or people or various things, you can't go fast. The quads are usually faster than the cars or faster than the biker or the skater or the people or whatever you're chasing. And if you're not flying super close to something, you would rather have some smoothness factor and uh, better flight time. If you're like chasing cars or something, it's nicer to stay in the air longer. And this prop would work out for that. However, you would have to note that it is a 6.7 inch prop, so you have to take appropriate measures so that the props aren't in view of the camera when you are flying. But what you gain is improved weight bearing performance because it is a much larger blade. It does have much better disc loading properties. You also gain some more flight time because it is going to be more efficient at carrying itself and weight in general compared to a five inch prop. Additionally, what comes with this improved disc loading property is improved grip and just this planted feeling in the air. So that's really nice to have and you don't lose the responsiveness of a smaller prop. So you can still chase things low to the ground, you can be really agile, you can fly close to things, you have really good feeling in the air. So yeah, really interesting prop. Also, I would say that now that I see that this folding mechanism actually works really well and it's really, really nice to transport, the whole thing folds up in a package that's smaller than any of my five inch quads. So that's really, really nice to transport. I would say that there's ways to vastly, not improve, but just sidestep this folding mechanism such that it would make it better for most other props as well. I'm going to talk to a couple of manufacturers, specifically get FPV in, in, in general, to see if they're interested in kind of developing on this folded prop front. And I really would like to see more folded prop props coming. Oh yeah, one other thing. 
this set of props, they're, they're $11. It's an $11 set of props. I can't really speak of the durability because I didn't hit them, hit into anything, but I would assume that there may be some degree of folding of the prop rather than just straight cracking or breaking of the blades, which would be really nice for a folding blade. It would be really, really nice if we could change the, in, the blades independently and they sold the blades separate from everything else. Really super duper nice. And I would say that I hope that GetFPV or Lumiere, they try to further develop this kind of a folding blade. And yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what, what others come up with, because this is really interesting. Really, really interesting. If you do long range flying, if you have a seven inch quad, this is worth your time. It's, it's, you don't have a lot of options in the seven inch range. So this is a good option for you to, to try. However, don't expect a crazy speed. You're not gonna get crazy speeds, but look at everything else, specifically the control and the response performance of the prop. Don't forget to floss your teeth. Take care. Bye.